Hello everyone, it's Nomad Flair here and welcome back to another video. So with the recent release of next-gen consoles, there's been a great demand by consumers for TVs and monitors that could fully utilize next-gen capabilities. As stock is very difficult to find and prices are very high, I was still adamant to find the best all-rounded monitor to suit my gaming and productivity needs. And to be honest, I found that monitor as it ticks all my boxes. This is the Gigabyte M32U. The M32U has a 31.5 inch IPS panel and HDMI 2.1 which supports a refresh rate of 144Hz on PC and 120Hz on next gen consoles. The response time is 1 millisecond which is super fast and also includes AMD FreeSync and also inbuilt speakers too. I will be testing this monitor out for gaming on the PlayStation 5 and for productivity on my Mac M1 Mini. We will begin by checking out what's included in the box. This includes an insulation guide and a warranty card, two power cables, one for the UK and other for the EU, a HDMI 2.1 cable and a DisplayPort cable. Lastly, a USB-A to a USB-B cable. The stand is easy to assemble and very, very durable. At the back of the monitor, you have the designated area to install the monitor mount and can also be used to install a VESA mount. At the top, you have the Gigabyte branding and the model on the left, the M32U followed by a KVM button for keyboard and mouse and an on and off button which also can be used to toggle and navigate around the menu. At the bottom you have all the connection ports. This includes an AC port and a power button, two times HDMI 2.1 ports and a display port which is 1.4, a USB-C port and a USB-B connection point. This also comes with three USB 3.0 downstream ports giving you the flexibility to connect your keyboard and mouse to the monitor. Lastly, we have the headphone jack. Attaching the monitor stand is one of the easiest I've ever seen, no screws are required. Just align the stand and it will click in in place. The second part of the stand is attached at the bottom by placing it into position and twisting the screw to tighten. To remove the stand, just raise the clip at the back and this detaches right away. The stand has a height adjustment of 13 centimeters and a tilt of minus five degrees to 20 degrees. This also can be swiveled from minus 30 degrees to 30 degrees. At the back is a cable management section which can help you disguise your cables. VRR variable refresh rate is not yet available on the PlayStation 5, but this will be available soon as Sony themselves have declared this. The side bezels of the monitor are 0.8 centimeters thick, which keeps the monitor looking nice and modern. The 4K resolution on this monitor is excellent. The level of detail on playing PlayStation 5 games is just incredible, paired with a 1 to 1000 contrast ratio and a non-glare screen giving out 10-bit color. The monitor also includes HDR400, which means that the brightness is 400 nits. This isn't that bright. I think to really get the most out of HDR, you should be playing at at least around 1000 nits or else the screen isn't bright enough. I never enable HDR when playing games as it looks a whole lot better without it. But again, this depends on your preference. The backlight bleed is minimal and sometimes non-existent. A great addition to this is the black equalizer which gives you flexibility to adjust black levels on the screen. In regards to the overall screen size, a 31.5 inch monitor is just perfect. I definitely prefer this over 27 or 28 inch monitors as I feel very immersed when gaming and I get to fully enjoy the 4K capabilities. Not only that, but also for productivity when editing my videos, I can see more of the timeline on the screen and I'm able to have multiple windows open on the screen at the same time. The color accuracy is amazing out of the box. However, this can be tweaked to your liking, which I will show you how to do this in a moment. This level of accuracy is a big advantage when editing photos in Lightroom. Gaming with this monitor is outstanding, especially when playing Warzone, the noticeable bump up in frame rate to 120 Hz has really made the movement on screen a whole lot smoother and the super fast one millisecond response time has improved my gameplay in sweaty close combat situations against other players. When playing The Last of Us 2, the visuals are just stunning, the detail and sharpness is really noticeable alongside the awesome contrast ratio. However, there is something I need to mention, even though the Gigabyte M32U comes with HDMI 2.1 port, it runs at a bandwidth of 25 gigabytes per second and uses 420 chroma subsampling. To break this down, we need to look at the following image. 444 are the uncompressed pixels, whereas 422 and 420 contain images that have compressed pixels, which have been subsampled to approximately the same color as the 444, and therefore both require less bandwidth over HDMI 2.1 to display the images. 
With the Xbox Series X, there is no effect as it comes with a feature known as DSC, which is known as Display Stream Compression, which is able to display 4K 120Hz without any loss of quality. On the other hand, DSC is not available on the PlayStation 5. However, don't let that put you off because after countless hours of gaming on the M32U, I couldn't notice a difference at all. This minor limitation is only on the HDMI port, however, when using the display port to game on the PC, you are able to get a 444 uncompressed image and 10-bit color. The speakers are located at the back of the monitor and they're not bad at all. I'm happy as this is an included bonus as most gaming monitors lack an inbuilt speaker. However, the majority of users will be using the gaming headsets or may plug in external speakers. You're also able to charge your phone, which is really cool. However, you're not able to charge your keyboard and mouse. The KVM button allows you to share your keyboard and mouse with multiple devices via the USB Type-C connector. Just press the button and you're able to seamlessly flick from one device to another. The toggle stick at the back allows you to navigate through the monitor's OSD. There are numerous options where you can select the different picture profiles. Also inbuilt color customization where you can adjust the contrast, the vibrance, the sharpness, the gamma, the color temp, and also local dimming, etc. There's also a PIP picture in picture feature which allows you to have another window in the corner showing you another source which is useful for productivity. There is also a timer for gaming which makes you aware of how long you've been gaming for and when you should be taking your next break. You can also display a refresh rate to see if the frames are dropping in game. And you can also display a crosshair, which is extremely helpful when playing first person shooters like Warzone, Fortnite and Apex Legends. There's also several other features included in this monitor. Before purchasing this monitor, I was focused on finding an all rounder that not only plays games, but also can be used for productivity. As mentioned earlier, the screen size is perfect for me and for my work, as I can have multiple tabs open and displayed at once. Editing on my M1 Mac mini has been a gem and a breeze. The detail and color accuracy is perfect when using the movie picture profile. If you are looking for a monitor that does it all, 4K 120Hz gaming, 1 millisecond response time, inbuilt speakers, a vast number of customizable features within the OSD, a 31.5 inch IPS display, with excellent picture quality and contrast ratio, then consider this monitor. Sometimes you can find it even cheaper, especially when it comes to seasonal sales. Of course, by no means is this cheap, however, with all the excellent specs and features, I believe this is well worth it and cheaper than most monitors with the same specs. Other than the reduced bandwidth over HDMI 2.1, which in reality is not noticeable after my countless hours of gaming, this monitor for me is the best all-rounder that does it all. So guys, let me know down in the comments section below if you're going to be picking one up and why. I hope you guys did enjoy this video and found it to be useful. If you did, I would appreciate if you could drop a like, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on so you won't miss my next upload. I post around one to two videos a week. So until next time, guys, take care. It's not a game, it's a